You are now listening to Vigilantes Radio, presented by the only one media group. This is the people's choice for quality interviews, celebrities and special guests. Hosted by Demetrius Dinny Reynolds. Call in to join the mix at 701-801-9813. For the complete archive of episodes, visit onlyonemediagroup.com and be sure to like us on Facebook at Vigilantes Radio. We welcome all. Enjoy the show. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome your host, Demetrius Houdini Black Reynolds. Enjoy the show. Hey, hey, hey. Good morning, America and Europe and China and, um, geez, all the other countries right now. Um, I, no, actually, if you're in China, you're, it's not morning for you. Uh, but nevertheless, how you do, right? Um, so glad that you guys have tuned in and uh, decided to be a part of my morning, right? So we have a very special guest for uh, today's episode. Uh, you definitely want to stick around for that. Uh, there are over 20,000 of you guys right now in our chat room on the browser, Google Hangouts, Skype, on the phone lines, all the plugins that we use to run these episodes, you guys are filling them up, and I appreciate that greatly. You could be doing anything right now in the world, and uh, but you chose to be here with us. Actually, you could still be doing anything in the world. Um, technology, right? Yeah, you can just carry us around in your pocket. How convenient. Oh my goodness. So... Um, just want to say guys uh don't get trapped by dualistic thinking just because a is true does not make b false often a and b can both be true and always remember there are three sides to a story or three perspectives three viewpoints right the things you must do can also be the things you want to do. What you give can also be what you receive. What you teach can also be what you learn. Your task can be difficult and at the same time enjoyable. What is good for the customer can also be good for the vendor. Many times we make the mistake of defining things by what they are not in doing so we limit our thinking and our possibilities in reality there are very few opposites is teaching really the opposite of learning is female really the opposite of male is love really the opposite of hate is play really the opposite of work in my case yes it is but forget that of course not Many of the things we consider opposites are in fact very similar. Our desire to classify and categorize, while often quite useful, can also be limiting. Possibilities arise not from the destruction of other possibilities, but rather from the opening of the mind. Take that from me, Daniel Mussolini. Uh, That is my word, and the word is bud. You're live in the mix. Let's get this started. Yo, hello and welcome to another awesome episode of Inside the Music or the book or film or even the business where we dive into the minds of the people who create these marvelous things. It feels so good to be back with you guys once again. 
big ups to my folks who are indigos, crystalline, or the star seas. For my vigilantes audience family, for my hooligans, and shout out to my people who are vegetarian or vegans. If you're in a struggle like me, we are averaging over 37,000 live listeners, and we've been at this for five solid years. I appreciate all you guys who've been rocking with the kid on this journey, and we are still evolving, baby. It is all because of you, most definitely. We are the people who have dedicated their lives to music, spirituality, business, literature, art, films, and research in every aspect. And we want to allow you an opportunity to tell your story. Man, we've had celebrities on our show from Grammy Award winning artists, uh, nominees to actors, comedians, CEOs, technology revolutionaries, visual artists, from authors to professors and vampires. Or people who think they're vampires. It doesn't matter who you are or where you come from. Come on our show and talk to me. So check it out to book your interview or to appear on my other show called Skeptics. Email me at vradio at only one media group dot com. And that's V as in Victor. We hope to get the stories behind these unique people and give them a chance to tell their truth to us and the universe. That is Vigilantes Radio Soul Purpose. You know the number to dial 701-801-9813. Share that number with your buddy right now and tell them to tune in to connect with us or our guests. Or you can hop in the mix directly from our website, which is onlyonemediagroup.com. Right from the homepage, you can slap that go live button and you'll be here live in the mix and in the chat room with all of us. So feel free to shoot over some questions to ask our guests while they are here. But only as time permits, sometimes my guests and I talk entirely too much. And as always, all episodes are available for free download and you can grab that from either spricker.com forward slash only one media group itunes player.fm youtube any app from the google player itunes store or over at our website and that goes for every single episode that we've ever aired good morning again today's interview is the austin morola interview and again i'm your host denny mussolini Our interviews go beyond the music, the books, the business, the acting, and into the minds of the people who create it. From researching our special invited guests, mining for details, listening, reading, to watching everything we can, we are like TMZ. Our interviews are designed to bring out the best answers possible through provoking questions that that have real substance. Well, we aren't like TMZ, but it was worth a shot. A sincere warm welcome to the podcast host, optometrist, singer, songwriter, guitarist, and being Spider-Man at night. His name is Austin, you know. We're going to welcome him to our show today. And we'll have an absolutely amazing time talking with him about his beginnings, songwriting, evolving, and uh, potentially changing uh and how he managed to create a Christmas album. Did I just say he was Spider-Man? I just gave away his super identity. I mean, secret identity, not super identity. Gee, sorry, Austin. Um, yeah, we'll have to talk about that. Sorry, bud. But, you know, to find out, guys, adjust your headphones. Hold on to your seats. It's happening right now. Hold on to your beers and hats. Well, coffee is kind of too early for it beer unless you have like a Russian mudslide or Kahlua or even eggnog for that matter I won't tell if you won't tell but we are about to dive deep so (laughs) with that let's go ahead and welcome him to our show Austin man how are you I'm doing great Denny thanks for having me on your show everyone out there uh, happy day yeah man happy happy day so um (laughs) First things first, man. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? Yeah, and I'm so and I'm so glad you told all your listeners that I'm Spider Man. So it's great to start out <laughs> with the big reveal. <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah. Yo, we gotta have some kind of exclusive, right? <laughs> <laughs> I used to try and be incognito when I was a little kid and catch up with Superman so that they would know that I was actually Spider Man. But now that the, the cat's out of the bag, you know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, I was going to ask you, you though, how does that, I'm doing great, man. I was going to ask you, how does that work? You know, where are you, in New York? 
I am. I am in New York City, and I live uh, in this wonderful, beautiful, big city next to the to the park. And I'm grateful right. that I have this wonderful, uh, you know, city to my, uh, you know, in my grasp. And uh, there's so much to do here. I always feel like I'm a I'm a tourist, even though I've lived here my whole life. Uh, it's it's just really. Uh, a great place to connect to people yeah. and to see all the different diversity and the multicultural, um, you know, uh, outlets that are here. And I live in a really diverse place. At the at, it's at the end of uh, Central Park West and beginning of Harlem, so I get all this really colorful food and uh, language and people, and it's inspired a lot of the music that I. I've been putting out, and I'm, I'm going to be putting out also another album next year. So it's it's really kind of um, a really wonderful place to live. Definitely, definitely. Yeah, I could tell, man. New York uh, seems just like a place that's just fully full of Avengers and uh, inspiration for songwriting. It is. Uh, I mean, I just I just think creativity in general in a city like this. There's so much potential. There's so much um, abundance. Whether it's obviously the economy, there's a large financial portion to the city, and there's also, um, you know, we have Broadway. We have the, you know, great music scenes from like obviously the biggest, uh, you know, theaters, whether it's Radio City or Madison Square Garden, to you know smaller venues which I've performed in, like um, the City Winery or uh, you know local clubs around town and uh and it's really kind of there's something for everyone and i mm-hmm. think that's what the, the beauty of a, a big city like this and uh, it really is the big apple yeah and you did a little theater right i did actually i i actually had my uh seg after an act of equity and i've done you know broadway and off-broadway work uh years ago and, and then i transitioned from being uh, you know, a singer, dancer, <clears throat> actor to playing the guitar back 12, 13 years ago. Um, a teacher of mine recommended, she's like, you know, you should go to this songwriting festival, and uh, which happened to be upstate New York. And I had never written a song at that time, but I had obviously done so much, uh, you know, I had a lot of background performing. And so I, before I, you know, the week that I was there, I wrote this, my first song, and it's called My Journey on my uh, my first acoustic album called You and Me, and uh, we got to perform it, uh, all, you know, our songs at the end of the week, and they kind of had a lineup, and I got picked to go last on the first night, and people that were performing, everyone was kind of sitting and enjoying everyone's songs, and when I got up there, it just seemed like everyone all of a sudden stood up, and you could just see everyone moving and kind of like... You know, jiving with uh, with me and my band, and at uh, and as, as I got off the, the stage, one of these uh, he was a producer, uh, big producer in Nashville, has got his music in a lot of different films. And Tom Kimmel comes up to me and he said, "Hey, he goes, that song was awesome. You know, how many albums do you have out there?" And I kind of looked at him and smiled, and and he was like, "So how many albums?" And I said, "Well, I said first of all, thank you." I was like, that was my first song. And he just, you know, he started cursing at me, which I can't say online, but uh, he was like, man, you have to keep doing this. You have to keep doing this. And uh, he goes, this is, this is in your blood. So, um, but that was, that was uh, like 13 years ago. And then I started learning the guitar because I wanted to be able to uh, accompany myself <clears throat> and write music. And so I got hooked up with the best guitar teacher in the world. Her name is Valerie McEnn. And she uh, has this wonderful uh, program of teaching students the strumming uh, patterns and picking patterns uh, from all different rock, pop, folk, uh, or songwriters and singers, icons, uh, you name it. And she created the guitar program for the new school uh, years ago when she started teaching there. And then when she left, <laughs> the guitar program uh, fell apart because that's how good of a teacher she was. Because you know, and 
just to give you a, a for example, and she's a woman, and she's, you know, and I say she's the best guitar teacher, uh, because I would go for lessons, and I remember one lesson I was writing one of, one of the songs on my second album called Lullaby. I was playing my ukulele and I was figuring out uh, ukulele chords, and <clears throat> she goes, you know, you're going to have to leave a little early today because I have a new student coming in. I said, you know, Val, I never leave early because I'm always trying to get the most juice out of the, the fruit, right? And she goes, all right, well, the next person comes in, just be, you know, just be cool. I said, Val, I'm always cool. And so we left. And mm-hmm. in walks behind me, Bette Midler. And so I, I, you know, I smiled and I was still, I was like, oh, I have to still, you know, play because she's a little bit early because I'm, you know, still finishing the song that I'm writing. And uh, so she smiles me and she goes, oh, you know, she asked me about the song. And I, and I told her that I wrote it for my nephews. Well, they were little, they were babies at the time. And uh, and so at, at the end, I said, you know, you're going to have a really great lesson today. She goes, oh, yeah, why is that? I said, well, because Val's in a good mood. And <clears throat> and my teacher, Val, is, is uh, kind of a liberal. So I said, Val, the news of the day happens to be good. So uh, I, th- I know you'll have a, a good day. So And I said to her, my name is Austin. She goes, my name is Bet. And I said, yes, yes, I know <laughs> your name. <laughs> and uh, I said, I think we have a friend in common. Uh, and she goes, who's that? And I said, Julie Gold. She, you know, she goes, oh, of course. And Julie Gold was the one who wrote uh, a song called From a Distance, uh, which happened to win, you know, Grammy back in the early 90s uh, for betting for her. So that was, you know, a cool moment. And uh, and then I would see her in the elevator every time we'd have lessons back to back. I would, uh, you know, say hello. We'd, she'd always be competitive and ask me what part of the curriculum I was at. And since I had been working with my teacher for years, uh, before Beth got there, I was I was kind of in an intermediate at a level at the time, and Beth was a beginner, so we would always joke, and, and I'd say, I was like, don't worry, one day you're going to be surpassing me because I know you're such a, like, an overachiever, and, uh, and and then we'll be able to play guitar together and, and you know, do, do that on stage, and that, that's what I would joke to her. But anyway, so that's that's kind of uh, how I started writing music, every every type of uh, lesson from a from a great song that was written from you know back in the day. Uh, I would take that strum or that picking pattern, and I'd want to write a song using the pattern. Of course, changing the chords and writing in my own kind of from my own heart what I want to write. But essentially, I used the the templates of the pattern, the picking and the strumming patterns, and made it into something because I wanted to reinforce the knowledge that I learned. You know, the students that went to my teacher, all they had to do was just play the song. They didn't have to they didn't have to sing it. They just had to play it to complete to go to the next song. For me, my teacher and I created this program where not only did I have to play it, I had to play it and sing the song. And then I gave myself extra homework which was to write a song in that pattern. Mm. Which, you know, was another level and uh so to this day, I have lots of different songs and lots of different patterns, lots of different, you know, strums, and uh, and I'm grateful to, uh, and I still, you know, work with her, and I'm so grateful to her for the knowledge that she's passed down to me. Down. down. Okay. Austin, let's back it up for a minute. Um, what was life growing up for a young Austin? Well, I'm. I was brought up in a uh, on Staten Island, which is one of the boroughs out here, and it's a. And I went to a Catholic grammar and high school, so I was kind of in this interesting world, uh, taking lots of different classes in a parochial environment, and even though I was in this kind of structure, I never truly felt like it was necessarily the full calling. Although what I did enjoy was the families and the people and all my friends that I grew up with. My best friends uh, growing up, I still am in close contact with today, like people I've known since I'm five years old. Um, mm-hmm. And even, even my friends, um, uh, my best friends from high school, we were in the same class. My friend James Murray and, and uh, guys, we started an improv troupe uh, after we graduated college. And they're on TV doing um, the Impractical Jokers, um, and I was actually one of the you know guys that started doing improv with Sal and Joe and and James and uh, and Brian. Those are the four guys that are on the 
uh, Impractical Jokers, and we started a, a troupe called the Tenderloins before before it actually went on to True TV and became a big TV show. But so all those guys I'm still friends with. Even my best friends, uh, my best friend, you know, Brandon, directed three of my videos um, for the current album, The Christmas Kiss. But the Staten Island is a really interesting place, um, and uh, it helped me and shaped me into the person that I am. And I'm grateful to uh, for all the education that I've gotten. Uh, and but what it what it did provided for me was, and at least what I what I found out when I was younger was that I needed to branch out and go places if I was going to understand the world. And I went to Binghamton University, at, you know, for college, and that's when it, I kind of opened my eyes to like, oh, there's all this other cultural diversity out in the world, all these different religions. And I took classes. My first class was uh, um, about the uh, you know philosophy of religion and it was taught by a rabbi and it was there that I learned a lot about uh, philosophy from perspective of um, from the you know Hebrew or Yiddish or or uh, you know backgrounds coming from a Catholic school environment you don't get that and then years later um, I decided I knew I wanted to be a, a performer but I knew that and I was and I had <laughs> In my opinion, I had a brain, and I wanted to also be able to support myself. And I was like, how do I support myself in a career that is not necessarily easy for a performer, especially if you want to live and have a comfortable life? And I had dreams of having an apartment, of having a home, and family, and all that stuff. So um, I knew that I, I needed to have a career that helped support my performing career. And so I went to um, to optometry school here in New York City, and I became an eye doctor. And while I was doing that, I was still auditioning, getting into shows, doing doing tons of stuff. And um, and that's how. And it was not easy. Let me tell you, it was just, it was it was a struggle because I wanted to be in one place, but of course I was studying all the time, and I had to take all my boards. But it was the best decision because now I have a really beautiful home here in the city. And of course, I have a wonderful career and I do love seeing all my patients. It's, it's, uh, it's a career that uh, keeps giving back because it's kind of like a car, you know, driving your car to work. This career of optometry drives me to essentially achieve my dreams in music. But what I, <laughs> what I didn't realize until after I became an eye doctor was that um, Everything I do really is is part of the nature of, of what I am. Essentially, when I'm giving an eye exam, I'm helping my patients see their dreams more clearly. And with each song that I write, I'm helping myself see dreams, my own dreams, clearer and clearer. So um, I'm really grateful to this journey and this road that I've taken. And, um, and it's taken me to uh, wonderful places like this. And, and, you know, years after I became an eye doctor, I was introduced to, from a patient of mine, a teacher of mine who studied with the Dalai Lama for many years. And then she was the one who said, you need to go to the songwriting festival. So that's kind of how that story connects, because through her, through this woman who's, you know, a Buddhist monk in, in, in her own way, uh, she introduced me to uh, going to write music. Uh, and then from that, the, the road shifted. In a, in a dramatic fashion and, and boy has it given back to me in, in spades um, and I'm grateful so you know, now I have all these different philosophies of religion that I that kind of support my life whether it's mm -hmm. through Buddhism or, or Christianity or you know <laughs> Judaism which is funny because my producers uh, on my last two albums especially Christmas Kiss uh, one of my producers is Jewish the other one is is from a, a Christian background. I mean, I come from uh, the mixture. So it really is, it's funny that it's a holiday album, but it's more of a, it has a lot of Christmas themed uh, songs, but there's also a couple of spiritual songs on there that really kind of can be um, for everyone, for every, uh, every religion or non-religion. And that's kind of what I wanted. I wanted something for everyone. And uh, so I'm grateful to have had the opportunity to kind of work on that, especially with that group, and I think it made the album 
you know, so much more because of the people that were involved and the love that was put into it. Definitely. Definitely. All right. Nice. Well, let's talk about your last album for one quick second. Um, throughout the uh, conception to uh, recording and production, did the songs that much change throughout the uh, process? For Christmas Kiss? No, no, your last album. Before. Um, for real. You know, what I did, well, yeah, exactly. Well, for, for my first and my second, it was a complete... A complete shift. I had an acoustic album in my first, uh, you know, first outing, and mm -hmm. because of the amount of money I had to put in, it was done. It was done quickly, and I'm, you know, grateful to the work that we put in. But real, which was my second album, I came out with, you know, a couple of years ago. Um, I decided to, you know, try and put as much uh, of the bells and whistles that I could into it, and I wanted to have um, this kind of uh, string quartet uh, attached to this pop mentality which I noticed in, in you know what was going on a couple of years ago in music was there was this fusion of sound and uh, and I wanted to bring this loftiness this heaviness of you know the of strings with like the guitar based and or driven uh, pop rock uh, and folk fusion that I kind of Put in and a lot of my music is I, it has a message like uh, you know like to inspire to uplift to and I write music because I know that it's all about uh, like writing your own script kind of like the laws of attraction you put out there what you want and so every song that I kind of that I construct it has a it has <clears throat> either a theme or a, or an emotion or a sentiment that is about uh, uplifting and connecting everyone and either bringing love or or um, or happiness or joy something that is at the root of what we're all looking for and I'm and I don't put out there anything that's that has a negative connotation because you know what it's kind of a heavier song I mean I do write I have a song called forgiveness that a lot a lot of people love but it's uh, and it talks about certain things that you know a relationship that kind of went into a weird direction but that you can find middle ground to connect and and uh, oddly enough that song on the album seems to connect the most with a lot of people and I think it's because we do need a lot of forgiveness in today's world especially when we're fighting each other whether it's in politics or family stuff that we're that we're you know constantly dealing with um, but because of the constant bar you know barrage of things that are going on we need to remind ourselves that we're all human, that we all have love, and that we all need love, and that um, it takes it takes two people to want to come together, and forgiveness uh, is at the heart of it. If you can forgive yourself uh, first, you can forgive the other person, because uh, it, it does. It, you have to forgive both parties when something happens, even when you don't think you're wrong. You have to say, you know, I forgive myself for this because something happened and you know even though I can't maybe explain it right now maybe the yeah. truth will come out later on and uh, but uh, we all have fragile hearts we all want to mend it and so um, if you look at yourself in the mirror and you say to yourself I know I have a lot of love to give and I know that that person may be hurting too and you you may be mad at them but you have to say you know what I have to take a step back and forgive myself, forgive them, and then find a way so that we can, you know, uh, make our way to each other. Sometimes it works out, sometimes it doesn't. In the case of that song, at the time I was, uh, I, I, my mom and I weren't talking, and it brought us back together. So, you know, the power of the song is really amazing. Yes, sir, definitely. So, Austin, man, why a Christmas album? To me, that's so hard to pull off, but it's amazing at the same time. Um, uh, yeah, yeah. So what what led to, I mean, what inspiration led to this Christmas album? It's called Christmas Kiss, correct? It is. It is called Christmas Kiss. Actually, the title is Christmas Kiss Deluxe Edition. And I'll tell you why the Deluxe Edition is because I have three videos that are on YouTube and Vivo that are attached to the album. 
um, uh, which is uh, you know part of the whole aspect of Christmas gifts. So uh, uh, several years ago, I was invited by uh, my my uh, my best friend at the time, Sloan Wainwright. She does a big family holiday gathering uh, here in New York, and uh, I was invited to sing at her holiday concerts and. She's part of a very big family of uh, musicians, Rufus Wainwright, Leon Wainwright's brother, and her, her niece, uh, Martha Wainwright as well, and all, all the other family members. Really wonderful family, and uh, she invited me to sing one, and I thought, oh, it'd be great for next year to have a holiday song, if we could sing together and do something really fun. And uh, so I write, started writing my first song, which happens to be the title track of the album called Christmas Kiss. And I said, we should write a song. I said, there's a lot of holiday songs out there that are kind of, you know, the, they're sung from one perspective or they're a solo uh, performed song. And I said, let's do a duet. Um, and that's kind of how that song came about. And I, I just thought, let's, let's make it so simple that the idea is, you know, every, you know, people just want so much uh, for the holidays, but when it really comes down to it, all you really need is, that, you know, something really... Um, simple, and that's how the, you know Christmas came about. And uh, and then the, we and then I said, let's do it every. You know, we we sang it at the show. I was like, let's do it every year. And then I our second song, uh, Alone on Christmas, uh, came about. And I said, oh, let's try and like do a do a spin on the Darlene Love kind of full specter world of music with all those wonderful chords that they use which Mariah Carey used on her All I Want for Christmas is You um, you know so there's like those magical chords and I and I use that and I, I said let's do a duet because there's no duet with that you know kind of chord structure and that's how that's on and uh, from that point I said you know what I really want to make an album I love holiday, holiday music and when I was growing up as a little kid my favorite day of the year uh, was always Christmas Eve. I come from a very large Italian family, so we traditionally do like a fish feast, uh, you know, evening, and we celebrate, uh, you know, together and or with, you know, pretty much eating and, and having fun. And I just know that Christmas Eve as a little kid, I was always running around the house trying to wrap my parents' gifts as they were cooking in the kitchen. And uh, because I was a little kid, I didn't have a lot of money. And uh, so I always made them, uh, you know, paintings because I was taking art classes or whatever. And uh, obviously you can see not much has changed because instead of painting uh, back in, back years ago, now I'm writing music. But, uh, you know, one of my favorite things that I used to do on that day, which uh, back then was just turn on my parents' radio and, and put holiday music on. And back then, it was only one day a year. Now it's like, as soon as November comes, as soon as, like, uh, you know, uh, uh, Halloween is, is over, holiday music is in full, you know, effect, which is great, uh, because now I have a holiday album, but, uh, but back then, it was only one day a year where they played this, you know, all these great holiday songs, and I love listening to, like, Wham's Last Christmas, or Frank Sinatra's Have Yourself a Merry Little Christmas, or, you know, Band Aid, Do They Know Christmas, mm -hmm. you know, it's like all these wonderful songs, uh, you know, hearing them back to back, and I was just like, oh my god, I love it. And, uh, and, my, and my friends love them too, uh, and so I just remember having that memory, like, you know, I, I come from a family where they do, we, we would, after, you know, either going to mass or coming home from, you know, eating, uh, we would open up our gifts and my parents would keep that, that big gift at the end, like, like uh, you know, in the Christmas story where Ralphie gets the gun where he shoots his eye out. And, uh, and it's just kind of, you know, it, there was nothing really simple about that family, you know, Christmas growing up. And I thought to myself, no one really has a Merry Little Christmas anymore. And so I, you know, a couple of years ago, I said, I'd, I'd like to write a sequel to this song, Have Yourself a Merry Little Christmas. So now mm -hmm. the, the iconic song has a sequel, and I, I call it Big Fat Christmas. The, the original title is Have Yourself a Big Fat Christmas. And so that song on my album, Big Fat Christmas, uh, and the you know, video just came out on Friday, 
um, so you can watch that on YouTube on the Austin Marola channel. And it's it's just a fun, uh, you know, boisterous, quirky, comedic song about everything that's over the top in Christmas. From the music, to the food, to family fighting, to snow, to struggling, you know, out. You know, you happen to go to work and you're not making enough money and, and all the kind of absurdities of the holidays. And it, it wrapped up in wishing everyone a big fat Christmas. So, um, so yeah, so there's, it's an album that came about because I knew that I, I just loved Christmas as a little kid and I just, uh, you know, even in the summertime a couple of years ago, I was just writing songs and it just, it was just all coming together and, and I thought to myself, I, I want to have something, uh, like this. And so this year is like the combination of, of finally doing that and I got to have this really big, uh, holiday show here in New York City. And we sold out at Symphony Space, and um, and I got to bring together, you know, friends and family, and you know, people obviously that I don't know that came to the concert, and we just had a blast. We had a great mm-hmm. time, and it's something that you know we can have, and you know, even the person who reviewed the the show, the, you know, I didn't even get a chance to meet meet her, but she said this needs to be uh, a show that happens every year. She was so kind. She wrote, you know, that it was one of the highlights of her year, and. It's one of the great things that uh, has come from this album. It's like all the reviews have come back so positive and well received, and uh, I'm just really grateful that the sentiment that I put in and me and my producers put in are, are you know kind of getting recognized, and also people are feeling that love. People are feeling the connection. I mean, it's an album of nine all original holiday songs there's no covers wow. there's nothing taken from something else and that's kind of uncommon i mean i'm, I'm not a big artist like uh you know obviously john legend has his, his album out there and he's wonderful but he has covers on his album and mm-hmm. um i you know there's something to be said about doing classics which are, is wonderful um but i thought how can i make myself stand out where people can maybe you know get a sense of who i am as an artist so this is an album that just kind of uh, covers all aspects of the, of, you know, the season. And it's not just about Christmas. It's about you and me connecting to one another and also recognizing the absurdities of the holiday, but also the simple things of the holiday, which are really all you really need is something uh, just you and I. We don't need much. And I also included a really kind of track, um, a special track. It's called Miracles. And it's about, um, back in 2012, 2013, Hurricane, uh, sorry, Super Sandy hit this area really bad, the Tri-State area. And um, I decided at that time to write a song. My brother's in the FDNY, my brother Rob, he's a firefighter here in New York. And he went through a lot to see families on Staten Island. He told me stories mm. about how, how uh, high the waters rose uh, in the areas you know by the water and uh he said he almost didn't make it out because the water breached so high and he was taking families out and their belongings uh but thankfully he did and i'm really proud of him and uh so it inspired me to kind of write this song about two people um that lose everything in the storm but they still have each other and that's the miracle of um you know, of, of Christmas for, uh, and, and that kind of song. And, and in the video that I made, uh, which is on YouTube, um, for miracles, uh, my brother was gracious enough to lend me his uniform to portray a firefighter in the uh, video. So, uh, it's, a, it's about a, a firefighter who is, uh, who, who comes out of work after the, after the storm and he's looking for his wife and his wife is a medic and he doesn't know if she's gotten out or if she made it out okay and um uh and then you get to see what happens uh in the video um but it's really about you know obviously every we all go through tragedies in life and it's and it's interesting because since then there's been so many more storms there's been so many more man-made uh you know um things going on around whether it's our country, around the world, but they're happening more and more frequently, and we can't deny that that's happening. And I think the song resonates now more than ever, and I know 
uh, the song actually just um, was, uh, you know, awarded by a couple of different um, platforms, and a lot of people are connecting to it. So I'm really grateful uh, that, you know, for some reason, Miracles is is a song that uh, that people are are understanding. And uh, so you have, you know, on, the, on this Christmas Fifth, Fifth Deluxe Edition album, you have a song about, well. If, even if you lose everything, you still have each other, and that's what a miracle is for Christmas, to the absurdity and big fat Christmas, uh, you know, of everything over the top that, that, you, that people do, to, you know, also a song called The Santa Shake, which I wrote, um, which is a, a dance song about how Santa, in order for him to go into everyone's homes after he eats every, all the cakes and cookies, that he has to do uh, The Santa Shake so he can actually... <laughs> keep performing and you know bringing everyone gifts so it's kind of um and that's been fun i just had one one of my um my friends call me up and she said her, her you know her son who is in the video had a lot of kids in the music video for the santa shake uh said that they were bringing the video to school and that all the teachers in the school were playing it for the kids and that they're going to be doing the Santa Shake today. So I was, I was really excited to hear because uh, it's, it's a song for everyone, from kids from 1 to 92 to 102 to, you know, a million and two. And everyone can get up and do the Santa Shake, which is a really fun holiday tune. And, uh, and so, yeah, so there's something for everyone on this album. And I'm really... I took... It took me seven years to kind of construct, obviously, with, with Summers involved. But also, you know, when you, I can talk to you about the production when you're getting into a studio and you're doing... I did two albums at once. So essentially, it took two years to kind of get in and get, get all the studio people together and the musicians and the, my background vocalist and all that stuff. So, you know, five years to write it, two albums of 22 songs. Uh, and then two years in the studio and then finally came out. So it's, it's kind of like, you know, how like a lobster kind of, you know, after seven, eight years, it, it, it takes off the, the shell and it has like a new shell of life. Yes. Yeah. It's yeah. kind of what it was for, for me after, after this, you know, all that time creating all that music and then finally seeing, you know, it, it seemed the light of day. And when you produce something, it's kind of a, like a child. You don't know where that child is going to go, but you just give it as much love. And hopefully that that child will go far and beyond. And um, right now, I know this is the beginning of, of it because it came out, you know, a couple of weeks ago. But everyone is saying how much they love it. And I'm like overjoyed i mean it's i'm yeah. really having that like stevie wonder moment where he sings overjoyed i'm i'm in that kind of bliss and i know christmas is you know upon us but i'm really blessed i know that's kind mm -hmm. of you know may sound a little uh you know i don't want it to sound cheap but it really it it's it's how i feel and i'm grateful definitely definitely i think uh christmas music has that power and, and, and for you to create an, uh, a nine song album of just sheer emotions and uh, embodying the spirit of good times and um, reflection. I, like I said, man, that's incredible to uh, pen an original album. So it, it took about, uh, what, seven years, you would say, in the making? Oh, yeah. Finally get, it's, it, yeah. Exactly. It's it, started, it started 20, 2011 at the yeah. holiday time in 2011 so that's when Christmas Kiss the first song uh, was written and uh, yeah Denny I, I can tell you the ups and downs of writing music I mean I went through some of these songs with a fine tooth comb and even some of the lyrics right at, to the point that I was even in the studio recording I was like oh god is this lyric right do I want to put this in do I want to change that because I'm I wouldn't say I'm a perfectionist but I'm definitely one of those people that kind of goes back and forth about certain things and I want to make sure that for the highest good of, what, of, of the song that it's put out yeah. there in the best way and there's a certain point where you just got to put your hands in the air and say I trust that this is the right direction and we're here for a reason and we're you know doing this now one of the songs on the album is called it's the first track on the album called it's called Can It Always Be Christmas and mm. it's a really fun kind of pop uh, driven song but it has these really great percussive um, sounds in the beginning so it kind of sounds like this Paul Simon you know uh, 
uh, you know, album. And, uh, and, it, and it just brings you in really quickly. And it, it's, it's pretty much the idea is, the question I put out there is, can it always be Christmas? If we have love in our hearts, if we have the right attitude, and if, we're, you know, if we give the way we always wanted to receive, uh, and put out there, and I and I and I made it made it so broad that I was like, this is what you know. It can always be Christmas every day because of the love in our, our hearts, and also for, you know the the ideas that I put in, which is you know giving back to people, seeing the way other people see, or you know giving to charity, donating clothes, adopting a pet, you know things like that. That um, are things that. You know, some people, you know, don't necessarily talk about, but during the holidays, it becomes a little bit more abundant because people are like, oh, we'll donate a jacket here, but what if we did that all the time? What if we were always in that Christmas kind of mood? And I, you know, the song kind of answers it, and, and, I, and when I say, yes, it can be Christmas all the time, you just have to, you know, just always remember that. Yes, exactly, exactly. So, do you have any upcoming plans to uh, support the release of the new records and uh, support the... Uh, uh, absolutely. Work? I... Yeah, so we just did the big, this past week was the huge release uh, concert, and uh, that was tremendous because we sold out the venue and it got so well received. And then and then the third single off the album, Big Fat Christmas, uh, was released on video uh, this past Friday. So that's, that was kind of the last push because, you know, Christmas is upon us, and I wanted to kind of kind of put a little bow at the top of of the release um, for the album because the album has The Santa Shape which is the first single Miracles which is the second and Big Fat Christmas which is uh, which is there and I know a lot of people may not put singles or releases um, out as quickly usually they do like one drop and then it's a couple of months and then it's another drop and, but because it's a holiday album it's a different animal you have to kind of treat it uh, in a way that kind of supports the album and, and it's and, and the best way possible. So we did, we kind of did a couple of weeks in between each video release. Um, and like I said, you can catch that on the Austin Marola YouTube channel. Um, and those three songs are out there. And it's kind of, and they're really great. You, if you have 10 minutes, you can listen to them all in a row. And it's really, it just, it'll put you in the Christmas spirit and the Christmas mood, you'll just be like, I now know what Christmas is. Just by like these three songs, you can get a, a full taste of like the, the fun, the joy, the also seriousness, and then the over the top of Christmas. And I think it, even though there's nine songs on, on the album, which you can listen to on all the different platforms, those three songs will definitely make you go, whoa, this is, this is, there's a lot of Christmas here, and, um, and like you said earlier, um, there's something special about the holiday, whether or not you celebrate it, whether or not you, you have a different philosophy of life, different religion, or non-religion, there's something about the energy of this time of year, and, and I think it brings uh, us all together in a, in, in a really beautiful way, and it reminds us. We have to look back at this, you know, the year of all the wonderful things and all the silly things and all the crazy things and maybe some of the bad things that have happened. But we're going to look back and we're going to try and take a moment to to uh, come together and remember that at the heart of things there is love, there is joy, there's happiness, and we have to we have to remember that. And so, and we all want that. So, and we're all wanting wonderful things in life, whether it's something from creation or or something from uh, something you know that we're trying to achieve in our own life but uh, you know we're all humans wanting things so Christmas right. I think brings us together in that way definitely and uh, you host a uh, your own uh, musician show where you interview other people how does it feel to be on the other side of the mic <laughs> <laughs> you know I did that for I did that for, for two years and uh, my friend Sloan Wayne Wright and I had a we called it the music power hour with Austin mm -hmm. and Sloan and boy did we have fun we had so many great musicians on uh, from uh, I had you know we had Alan Cumming who won a uh, Tony and an Emmy oh, wow. um, to you know, Julie Gold and 
uh, who, who won a, a Grammy. We have a lot of really fun, amazing people like you have on your show because I know you have a lot of award-winning people. And then we had a lot of songwriters and other uh, artists, you know, in the industry, producers that are, you know, uh, DJs. I mean, just all different artists just talking about creativity, talking about their work, and we had a blast. And I tried to, like, use themes of what was going on in the world at the time. So if it was summer, we did, like, summer hits, or if it was, you know, around Mother's Day, we kind of, like, used the time to, like, support songs that, that supported the time. And then we also did songs, you know, if it wasn't necessarily anything that was going on, we tried to use Pick a Theme to try and uplift our listeners, because as you know, it's it's not, uh, everyone's going through stuff, so we're always trying to engage everyone and get everyone connected and have really wonderful conversations. So, to answer your question, I love being on this side of the of the uh, the totem pole, as I would say, because mm-hmm. it's really fun just to talk. I mean, I could talk about all the things that are going on in my world. Uh, I think for you know for you, you you probably find you know when you're asking questions, you're always like, oh, I hope you know the the well one, I hope the listeners are engaged, but two, you hope that uh, you're having a good conversation with the person that you're on the phone with, or you're either in the studio with, or you know what I mean. So you want to have that kind of really organic connection, and um, but I, I mean I do love talking about music and creativity and and anything in the you know uh, whether it comes to art or music um, that's that's kind of it just it feeds my soul you know like chicken soup so um, so I love it and I and I'm sure it, it sounds like from all your listeners that are out there for you they love you and they love your show and. And, you know, Vigilantes, what a great name, you know, it's just kind of, <laughs> I feel like that's kind of who I am. I've been, I've been like a warrior, uh, yeah. ironically enough, right across the street is the Warriors Gate here in Central Park. So I really feel like I am a vigilante when it comes to music because I'm creating something from nothing, nine new original holiday songs. And, you know, who writes a holiday album? It's just kind of like, mm-hmm. <laughs> so I, I get where you're coming from and your platform is such a great tool for listeners and you kind of really interview all the different you know people in different genres or different different backgrounds and different businesses and and i really applaud you and your work so thank you for you know you, for sir. helping artists like myself yeah thank you very much um we're going to cut to uh, a music break and dive into big fat christmas and then i have one last question for you that i want to ask you is that okay Absolutely, I'm here for you. All right, after the break, guys, we'll be back uh, to do our traditional hot seat. I don't know, do you know about the hot seat? Uh, you know what? I, I, my, uh, one of my uh, PR people was telling, telling me that there's a, there is a hot seat. I don't, I don't know all, okay. all, a lot about it, but I just know there's a hot seat, so I'm ready for it. Whatever it is. <laughs> all right, cool deal. So. Our hot seat. Uh, fans love this part of the segment, of course, along with the actual interview. But our audience. Sorry about that, guys. Uh, <laughs> clumsy, clumsy, clumsy. But uh, what our hot seat is, is uh, our fans love this part of the segment, of course, along with the interview. But uh, what we get. Uh, from Austin, maybe it's uh, some you know vocals. Maybe he'll sing for us some poetry, uh, spoken word. Uh, maybe he can freestyle rap, tell us a joke or a story, or even play a live instrument. The choice will be his to make. You never know if these creative minds and vessels were produced in a spotlight. So when we come back, we'll find out if Austin has what it takes to be put on the spot, a test of his true artistry. But hey, he penned the entire Christmas album, original music. So I'm assuming he can do almost anything. So we're going to play uh, Big Fat Christmas, and we'll be right back. People wish you a merry little Christmas And sing a Frosty's old silk hat a silent night Does anybody still want that? Have yourself a big fat 
Christmas. May you get everything your heart desires. Have yourself a big fat Christmas. Pile presents up higher and higher. Overstuffed stockings, crispy turducken, Thanksgiving Day shopping, and I'm not even talking Christmas music all the time. Waiting on long lines, delivery deadlines. My credit cards decline with bigger lights. It's all the trees, faster trains. It's not free. So have yourself a big fat Christmas. May you get everything your heart desires. Have yourself a big fat Christmas. Pile presents up higher and higher. My car is under snow. Broke through shovels trying to go to work. Where you know I really make no dough. Office holiday party getting drunk and sloppy. Take a Xerox of my ass. Everybody here's a copy. Ten below. Can't feel toes. All this snow. Spike the eggnog. Have yourself a big fat Christmas. May you get everything your heart desires. Have yourself a big fat Christmas. Pile presents up higher and higher. Cookies and cakes, your diet's on a break While grandma's getting big Oh, for heaven's sake, every year it's just the same Conversations are inane, everyone's insane And I don't know why I came Family fights, politics, pretty soon Apocalypse Have yourself a big, fat Christmas May you get everything your heart desires Have yourself a big, fat Christmas Pile of presents up higher and higher of a big fat Christmas May you get everything your heart desires Have yourself a big fat Christmas Pile of presents of higher and higher Big fat Christmas So many presents and I can't lift them Big fat Christmas And remember, you can always re-gift them Alright, and we are back that was Austin with his song Big Fat Christmas if you like to see the YouTube video uh, we have the link in the show notes and description of this episode so all you have to do is click the hyperlink and it'll take you directly uh, to the music video no matter what platform you're listen to, listening to a song whether it's iHeartRadio Spotify, iTunes YouTube, uh, Google Play uh what else podcast addict um geez there's so many more we're, we're just about on all of them if you're not please write your local con- congressman and uh t- no don't do that don't tie <laughs> lawmakers with this okay but uh maybe you should write the uh the platforms and tell them to put vigilantes radio uh, into their database like we just recently got on Spotify and uh, iHeartRadio about two or three months ago and I'm still celebrating because I've been trying for almost a year and, uh, they finally let the kid in and uh, one small victory for us yay us right oh yeah there's nothing in my eggnog I promise I promise but um Listen, life improves greatly when you stop letting things happen and start making things happen. Instead of being a victim, be a doer. Instead of looking for someone to blame, look for what you can do. Instead of asking, why did this happen to me? Ask, what is it that I can do? Set your own agenda by focusing, you know, on your goals. No circumstance can overwhelm you when you live by intention. The things that happen are of minor importance, you know, compared to what you make them or what you make of them. Your strong direction, your sharp focus, your commitment and effective action will push you forward through anything, no matter what happens. Be responsible in your thoughts, in your words, in your beliefs, in your actions for the things that happen, and there'll be much more to your liking. Make life happen, and life will definitely happen for you. Take that from me, Diddy Mussolini. That is my word, and word is bond. But for right now, let's bring the man of the moment back on. Uh, Austin, man, you're back live with us. And now in our hot seat. Hey. 
I'm ready for the hot seat. Bring it on. All right. Yeah, man. <laughs> so uh, what are you going to do for us? <clears throat> I'm going to sing the Santa Shake uh, for all of you and uh, perform it at my home while you guys hopefully come through loud and clear and uh, you, get, you get to enjoy it. You can also check it out on the YouTube video uh, for the Santa Shake, which is out there. But I'm going to play it for you here. And I hope you guys enjoy it. Here it is. And there you have the Santa Shake. Ah, nice, nice. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. My pleasure. To all your listeners out there, to everyone, I wish everyone a happy holiday. And I know uh, I know it's really going to be uh, a really great holiday season for everyone. Just putting it out there for everyone. Yes. Thank you for that energy. All right. My final question, Austin. Um, no matter what uh, genre that you're in, no matter what part of the country you're from, everyone has heard of Kanye West, correct? Mm. Yeah. Yeah. He's a, so he's, a, we, he's, a, he's a hot topic now. Yeah, very, very hot topic. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah. So right now he's currently speaking for like um, mental illness because I, I think he's recently been diagnosed with maybe bipolar. Mm. Yeah. So yeah, he's a real hot topic. I, um, yeah, I just I just uh, read a little bit about that. Yeah, uh, but besides that, uh, what he's also known for is his God complex. Mm. Um, and I'm not going to deny he is a genius in certain aspects, um, but I was just wondering, Austin, is there a song of yours in your catalog where you're like, oh man, I am a freaking genius? If, if only they could just connect the dots to my lyrics and, you know, know the story behind what I'm saying, maybe the metaphors, the similes, all that good stuff. Is there a song um, like absolutely. that in your catalog? Yeah. <laughs> um, and it's on, well, 
it's on the it's on the holiday album, and I included ah. it with a song called Footprints. Um, my my favorite poem is um, is is Footprints in the Sand. A lot of people probably know this poem, Footprints in the Sand, because of mm-hmm. you know it's on the back of like funeral cards or mass cards or or it's on someone's wall in someone's house. But yep. the beautiful thing about the the poem. Uh, written by, I don't know if it was written by an unknown person or someone who's claiming it, but either way, I loved, I loved that poem, and uh, and unfortunately, it didn't connect to me in a way that I wanted to, you know, I wanted to just put something out there, and I was like, oh, I'll give myself homework. I'm going to write a song from this poem. I'm going to create a song out of this, but I wanted to make it for everyone. Uh, but the song was is essentially about. Jesus having your back and it's a beautiful poem and there's a lot of people in this world that connect to it because of Jesus but I know for me now in my life I wanted it to connect to everyone not just for Jesus so if you, you if you hear the song you'll understand that you can imagine it being with Jesus or you can imagine it being your best friend your mother mm. your father your child um, or just someone that you're really close to uh, because it's really a song that I wrote. I, I essentially took, I just made it about you and me, and then I decided also to add lyrics that are in the poem, and I added the lyrics, I love you, which is, um, you know, uh, essentially saying to that person, I have your back, and I'm going to be there for you, and I do love you. And uh, it's, it, it is the story of Footprints, but but told through music. And I'm I'm really excited about this song, uh, because it's it crosses barriers. It's not for a religion or a non-religion. It's really for every creed, race, color, gender, person. But it's really about human beings to other human beings. And so I think if I have to say that, you know, I know, you know, God, there is a God out there. He or she is mm-hmm. very proud of all the people that are up there. And he, and he or she put us here on this earth to do great work. And I think the story that is told about this wonderful teacher named Jesus that a lot of people uh, see as their, you know, father figure or God figure or, uh, you know, certain figure. You know, I, I see this, this person as a wonderful teacher, and I want to translate that story, which is a beautiful story, into a song. And, uh, and I feel like... Uh, every, you know, all, when we performed it at my show, all the background singers, they were like, this is a really beautiful song. And I really was, you know, grateful to hear that because um, it's, it's, a, it's a song that means a lot. And I think if people hear it, if it gets, if it gets around the world, uh, which, you know, I'm putting out there, I think it'll help, help people. I really do think it's going to help people heal and understand that we're not so far away from each other. We're not so different. You know, if you look at the insides of our body, we all bleed and we all have the same color blood, um, you know, regardless of our skin or, or our gender or our breed or whatever. We're all, we all go through what's called death, dying and suffering. And at some point in our life, we all are looking for love and, and connecting. And I think that's a song that just, just for me, just lets everyone know that I'm, I have their back and I love them. And so that's kind of the message that I want to, uh, you know, leave your message, uh, your vigilantes um, mm-hmm. listeners with. Definitely. Thank you so much for that, Austin. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, my pleasure. Thank you for having me on your show, and I wish you all the best, really. You too, man. You too. You too. Have a great day. And I, I really enjoyed talking to you about your Christmas album. I didn't know it was nine original songs, man. Now I'm even more amazed. Uh, well, you know, I appreciate it. I appreciate it, uh, uh, Denny. And, uh, you know, your your listeners can go on to, um, you know, uh, on iTunes or on all the different platforms. Just check out Austin Marola. My name is A-U-S-T-I-N and my last name is Marola, M-A-R-O-L-L-A. And I'm on Facebook, uh, backslash Austin Marola, or Instagram at uh, Austin Marola and I'd love to be friends with everyone, like my music page, and, uh, you know, let me know what you think about the songs, about the music, about the videos. Check it all out on YouTube today on the Austin Marola channel. And, uh, and I think you guys are going to have a really great holiday. 
and uh, would love to keep in contact. And if you want me to come and perform in your neighborhood, let me know. I'm, I'm happy to come out there, and I would love to to, to reach out to all you know to all you, you wonderful people out there. So, and just know that you all are loved. That's the last yes. piece I want to leave yes. you. Thank you so much, Austin. Have a great day. You too. Take care. Thank you, my Vigilantes family, as always, for checking out my podcast over here at Vigilantes Radio. All episodes are available for free download, and you can grab that from either Spricker.com forward slash only one media group, iTunes, YouTube, any app that's on the Google Play or iTunes store, or our website. And that goes from every single episode that we've ever aired. If you'd like to request music or a particular guest or send something for me to play, email it to vradio at onlyonemediagroup.com. If it's music, please label it by artist and title. Here's my disclaimer. We are genre free. We do not judge and we absolutely do not base our opinions on hearsay, but facts alone. And actually, you can scratch all of that because all of my opinions are always right. That's the bottom line. This is my show. So deal with it. Nah, just kidding. On behalf of myself, Danny Mussolini, I appreciate all you guys for tuning in either afterwards or live with us. Spread the word because sharing is caring. We stepped up our game just for you guys and our guests to make sure that you have the best experience here on our show. Be sure to connect with us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Tumblr, as well as Spricker. We always follow back. That is the number one rule. Okay, well, just remember to be yourself and be absolutely great at just doing that. Avoid being too comfortable because you're messing with your potential when you do that. Peace and have a good night. And now listening to Vigilantes Radio, the people's choice for quality interviews, art, music, and hot topics. Hosted by Demetrius Houdini Black Reynolds of the duo No Longer The Hero. All episodes of this podcast are available for free download at www.onlyonemediagroup.com. This is a 7th Sign Regime Rebirth Worldwide Syndicate Exclusive.